Hey guys, today we're taking a look at a very special piece today. We're taking a look at the Four Horsemen, Figura Obscura, Headless Horseman. And uh, I saw this guy on Instagram and I had to have him. I got him second rate, which um, believe me, was a pain. And um, yeah, let's get a better look at this packaging, shall we? So to bring this package forward is going to be hard so I'm just going to lay it on the turntable we have this beautiful portrait of the headless horseman with his pumpkin head on and it looks fantastic I absolutely love this the font that they have right there also with this horse with the I assume that's the four horsemen logo and then on the other side we have a bio for the headless horseman which I will provide for you right there awesome absolutely awesome with a flaming pumpkin of course and then we have this beautiful mural of the headless horseman holding a, a flaming jack-o-lantern just looks absolutely incredible it looks absolutely fantastic and i'm trying to i'm trying to remember who's um who's the artist of this but Whoever they are, they did a fantastic job. And I also saw uh, I Crane down there. So Ichabod Crane did not make make it out of the his encounter, legendary encounter with the horseman, sad to say. So then we have the other side, which is just Figura Obscura right there. And all of the websites right there. Up here we, we got the Four Horsemen logo window with the moon the moon like the clouds like in the anime in the cartoon where it's kind of looking like hands or trying to stifle it out then on the bottom you have all of all of the legalese and stuff you have the barcode which you won't need because yeah but uh yeah let's get this dude oh how am i gonna do the slam Let's get this dude out of the packaging. All right, guys, I actually forgot to mention uh, there is this magnetic kind of display piece that shows Sleepy Hollow in all of its glory. Very spooky. I'm definitely going to keep this for when I'm displaying him after this, but uh, it's also the front of the box where you have that beautiful portrait of the Headless Horseman as well. And then here's the window box. You got the horse with the extra mane. And you got the horseman with all of his accessories and stuff like that. But, um, all right, guys, for real this time, let's get him out of the packaging. All right, guys, so here we have the headless horseman and his horse uh, two pack here. And oh my god, this piece is incredible. I was literally just trying to find a pose to set up this segment of the review, and I got lost trying to pose the cape and get the hands just right, and it's it has just an astonishing effect. Like, and I didn't even get to screw with the horse that much, because I was just trying to stand the horse to support him. But don't worry, we'll get the money shot. We'll get the money shot. But, um, yeah, it was just incredible P see, posing with this guy. But one of the problems you hear a lot of people saying who already reviewed this figure is that the paint kind of rubs on you. And for a high-end figure like this, that shouldn't be the case. That is 100% true for me. I already have, um, I already have paint flakes on my hands, as you can see. So be aware of that. But besides that, this, this guy's a gorgeous piece. This guy's a gorgeous piece. I absolutely love it. So before we take a look at what it, he's currently sporting on the figure, we're going to take a look at the stuff that is not on the figure. So first things first, for the horse, it's the only horse accessory, I'm pretty sure. It's an extra mane for more dynamic poses where he's like flying in the wind and stuff like that. And we'll... We'll interchange all of these 
for the money shot. Don't don't you worry. And if you guys are wondering what the money shot is, oh boy, you're missing out. But um, then he comes with uh, all these hands. He comes with a uh, kind of uh kind of gripping hand but not really it's very it's too loose to it's too loose to hold the sword but it's not loose to the point where you can't have him grab the reins with it so there's that and then we also have another reins holding hand or a sword this, actually i think it's more of a sword hand pretty sure it's more of a sword hand then we also have a more gestured kind of hand and look at that or paint rub fantastic but um all these are expertly painted by the way with the divots and stuff like that the leather looks fantastic but more gestured kind of hand here and then he also comes with a hand to hold the pumpkin head and of course, they drop the best hand. But um, yeah, it's basically if you get the next accessory, which I will discuss, which is the alternate head with, because he's got a pumpkin head that can just sit on him. And then if you want to have him doing some uh, metal shit, you got to have him with the flaming head and the flaming eyes. It just looks incredible absolutely fantastic sculpting and paint with the glowing on the inside of jack lantern the the fire through the eyes and the fire out the back and even the just the pumpkin stuff looks really good too underneath looks pretty solid and then also i saw a lot of people didn't say about this but the fire on the back is removable so if you want him just like sitting if you want this head just sitting on him with the fire eyes because that looks pretty gnarly too you could do that as well without this but why would you not want this this is incredible right here you can't separate these two in my opinion anyway but you it's logical to do that but i wouldn't it's gnarly and then he also comes with an alter alternative uh head stump which uh, I'll demonstrate it in a bit, but uh, he comes with a head stump right there. And then he also comes with, if I, if I can find a stopping of this turntable. table. He also comes with, let me get him. Come on. Let's pull them all forward so I can see what I'm doing through the camera. At least I'm hoping so. There we are. He's unhooked from the reins. He also comes with, of course, the normal pumpkin head. And then you have the sword right there. We'll take a look at the sword real quick. If I can get it out of his hands. There we are. Looks pretty good. The paint, and I love the metallic paint on it. Metallic paint looks really good on it. And then the, the ribbon, the ribbed kind of handle with the ball bearing on the back. Just looks really good for a nice medieval kind of sword. I like that a lot. And then for, so how the head thing works is that you all, you, so you take the head off, right? And then there's this head peg. There's this head peg at the bottom and there's a uh, head hole in there. And then I'm pretty sure you could put the rest together. If you were a smart, capable human being but all you got to do then is just line it up like so and then voila he's actually headless but we're gonna 
take the collar off because he also comes with a bendy wire cape. It's fully bendy wired. And you can see where the folds are from the packaging. But uh, yeah, it's very nice cape. I love the chain going there with the two, two discs right there. Looks awesome. And it's a good material. It's uh, double layered because you've got, of course, the black on the outside, you got the red on the inside, and it's a double layered, of course, to hide the bendy wire running through the whole cape. But it, it feels of quality. It doesn't feel like very uh, crappy quality because um, the, the Batman Year Two, the, the DC Multiverse line, it has a very, it has, it, it has a cable quality too, but this feels so much better than this one. And it's, it's more rougher, but it's still way more, you can feel, you can tell that this is of quality. You can really tell that this cape is of quality and it looks fantastic on him, on him as I, you just saw me as I intro this segment. But, um, anyway, for the sake of, for the sake of the articulation and stuff like that and the details and all that good stuff. We're gonna leave the jack-o'-lantern head on. The normal... <sighs> Come on. Gotta put peg hole in. Like. Gotta put the peg in the hole, like so. And then you put that in there, like so. So, all right, finally, eight minutes into the review and we finally get to the actual figure. <laughs> so, um, I heard the, from uh, Mythical Agents collectors that he is very much a reuse of different bucks, but since I don't have any of those figures, this is very interesting for me. So, for the main head, we have very much the jack-o'-lantern thing kind of going for him and the lantern looks really good i think it looks really good of course you got the yellow in there which looks nice and then the carving looks very menacing and scary very spooky figure he's definitely going to be my halloween figure next year 100 percent. and then of course we have um this the i'll get into that but um we have the leather, leather texture on the collar, which looks really good as well. Looks fantastic. And then of course we have the kerchief right there, the purple kerchief, which gives, gives him a popping color right there. I think it really complements the, all the black and silver with that dash of purple right there. And also the belt too, but that dash of purple really complements what he's got going on here. And then we, of course, have this uh, leather armor that looks very much like out of the the 18th century. Because according to the box, he is a uh, Hessian veteran who fought in the revolution and was decapitated, of course. And now he, wants to, he just wants to try to find a new head. That's the Headless Horseman's shtick. If you didn't read the bio, I gave you a shtick about the Headless Horseman. But anyway, the leather looks really good. All the dots are really good. I love the medieval kind of belt that's going on here because a lot of how medieval belts are is that you'd, you'd tie it really much like a tie, like a necktie, where you'd, um, we'd come around and put it back down through so you get this little bit right here it's just something to consider i thought that was a really cool touch and then if you want to there's also a place to put the sword if need be if you want to i wouldn't recommend that but if you want to have him holstering the sword for some weird reason there you go just a cool thing that they didn't need to add is a place for the sword on the figure because there is a place for uh, the sword on the horse. But that's cool too. Then you've also got these uh, brilliant texturing 
of the the inner shirt which again is amazing top tier texturing right here absolutely fantastic and then the leather gloves with all of their everything's painted by the way which is awesome i absolutely love that everything is painted down to the buckles and the divots and all that stuff it just uh this piece is amazing and then you got the purple buckles right there you got this round pouch right there it's just a fantastic figure through and through i'm in love with this guy now of course we have these armor shin armor right here which looks pretty rad if i do say so myself and then on the back you have that nice leather texturing again with the leather straps which have the buckles painted McFarlane take notes but um <laughs> the, the budgets on these figures are way higher but um yeah this dude's fantastic and then he also has the sculpting on the shoes right there and he's also got peg holes, which is nice. I just realized that. I didn't think he was going to have peg holes, but he's got peg holes, which is nice. And then he, he's obviously the re, this is obviously a reuse with uh, it painted differently. But since the fact he has the cape, it doesn't bother me because you'll never see it, right? You'll only see the cape. So that's okay for me. Because you won't see it because you have this massive flowing cape. But uh, besides that, figure is absolutely phenomenal. Love all the accessories that come with him. The other head, which looks gnarly. You got the sword. And then, of course, demonstrate. I'll demonstrate it for you right now. You do... Something like this, which looks absolutely baller, in my opinion. I didn't push it all the way in because uh, I don't want to pull. I don't want to pull a Shardimus Prime on his review and break it. So there you go. Looks gnarly. But anyway, let's get let's get the headless horseman out of the way and talk about the horse now. So this horse looks fantastic. Like I said, everything is painted, and you can totally see the skin and the veins, and it's just, this is a remarkable, this set is remarkable. It's absolutely fantastic. Absolute, like, just look at the blanket on, look at the blanket, because it's got the chain mail, and then you got the blanket, and then the saddles all leathery and cracked. You got the sleeping bag, which is also textured and painted, which, ah, uh, it, it, it looks so good. It looks so good. And you got all the other straps, which, uh, and you got the stirrups. You got every, everything's textured the way it should be. It's just so nice to have all this realism and stuff like that. And then he's got this gnarly, like, like open mouth with the red eyes. It just looks very scary. Looks absolutely fantastic. But um, while we're talking about the horse, let's talk about the articulation of the horse. The horse, the horse's neck can move that far forward, that far back, a little bit side to side. And then the actual head can move about that far forward, that far down, and a little bit of rotation right there. With both, you can get some pretty gnarly poses. And then with the legs, I'm only going to use um, one of each because both of them really have the same range. So you can move it that far forward, back to stationary, and then you can bend the knees about that far in. And then, of course, you got the ankle joints 
which moves that far down and that far up. So ankle joints are absolutely fantastic. And same for the other side. And then for the leg joints, you have a little bit, you can open it a little bit. And so it can open about that far. And then of course for rotation, he can move that he, this leg can move that far forward. And then that far back if you really wanted to, but looks like it was designed to only go to about here. And then you also have the knee, which goes back about that far, right there. And then you've also got this knee, which can move that far in and back to stationary. And then of course the ankle, same deal as the top side. So this, this horse looks fantastic. I'm totally gonna do some running poses with him. And I am going to rear him up. I'm going to try really hard. But um, yeah, this horse looks fantastic. Absolutely digging this horse. Has a good weight to it. It feels solid, feels of quality. That's a big thing with this, with these, with this set is that it feels of quality. So that's a really good thing, but uh, we're gonna put the horse to the side, discuss the articulation of the actual headless horseman, because I completely forgot, I'm not gonna lie. But um, for the head, it moves about that far down, and then about that far up, and then he can move, swivel all the way around, and do some head, head pivot. It's a ball joint. What more do you expect from a ball joint? has really good range and then for the arms it's a shoulder peg so you can move out about that far he can move all the way around and it's nice and tight too so you don't have to worry about it being loose and then with the arms it is single jointed and the joints look and the joint looks pretty solid but um the joint is not textured but Besides that, joint looks pretty solid for the most part. And it feels like it's gonna stay there too, which that's important. And for, I'm pretty sure all of the, ha well, for 90% of the hands, for 90% of the hands, they move in and they move in and, well, they move in. I'm trying to get it to move out, but I don't think it'll work. So they move in. And then for the Reigns hands, they move, they have a roll the dice kind of hinge for that. It's not impressive, the amount of range, but it's still there, which is really cool. And then of course you got the diaphragm, Classic ball jointed diaphragm right there that we've seen a million times on multiverse figures and other lines, of course. And for the legs, what do we got with the legs? It looks like just the standard kind of uh, Mattel kind of Marvel Legends kind of joint up in the legs. And so we have a thigh swivel, which has really good range if you really wanted to prove that. And then you have, for the legs, you have a nice, uh, it's a single hinge joint, but I like the fact that it kind of, when you bend it, it hides the, pa the pants. So you get that kind of look where it's like, oh, it's the pants that are tucked in into the armor. But when you put it down, it's like, oh, that's, it's still really cool that you get the pants there while it's bent down, you can barely notice the joints there. And then of course with the, and then you can also uh, swivel the, this part of the leg, the shin. I just got, I just got this off of work, but, um, and then with the ankle, you can move it down about that far, up about that far, 
and then you have nice ankle pivot and you can rotate too. So really cool, artic really good articulation all the way around on this guy. Here he is with the only kind of strictly Halloween figure I have. It's of course the DC Multiverse Frankenstein, which I know isn't technically like Frankenstein Frankenstein, but I mean, it's still the character of Frankenstein's monster. And um, these guys look all right together, but I wouldn't consider putting this Frankenstein with this headless horseman. You gotta get yourself a classic uh, universal horror kind of Frankenstein or something like that. Something from NECA would do a lot better with this guy than this Frankenstein right here. But it's still cool to have these kind of monster kind of characters in the same place, even though this guy's obviously from the DC universe and this guy is from an actual fable. And to keep the monster train going, we of course have the DC multiverse, the demon Etrigan right there and these guys look a little bit better, but if Etrigan had so much more paint on him, these two would be an insane combo. It would be insane, but only if Etrigan had more paint, which I'm not a customizer, that's not my thing, but it is what it is. And to really get and hone in that monster kind of feel, we of course had to put our new Headless Horseman here with the recently reviewed city hunter predator of course with the ugly motherfucker face because of course you got to do the monster thing he looks like a monster with the uh helmet off and this guy obviously has no head so he's a monster too so yeah besides that these um uh, don't fit in any regard whatsoever because this guy is very technological and this guy is kind of more simple so do with that what you will all right guys after a lot of trial and error i finally was able to get him rearing rearing the horse while holding his sword and the flaming pumpkin just like the ichabod crane cartoon and oh my god it looks fantastic this is this is a badass piece guys if you guys have a chance, get him. Get this get this two pack. It's incredible. I absolutely love this pack. I this is the this is the baby of my collection now. He, he's absolutely amazing. I love I love the I love this figure. Absolutely. 10 out of 10. The there's a few things that are kind of like that are kind of like detriments, like the paint rubbing and stuff like that. But besides that, fantastic figure. I cannot recommend to him enough. He looks so badass on your shelf, and it's going to have such versatility when Halloween comes around. And people are people are literally going to be like, what is that? That is awesome. But, um, yeah, totally recommend getting him if you guys find the chance. Unfortunately, he only had a limited quantity made. And the only way you can get him is aftermarket, and they're selling him for super expensive. So be on the lookout for that when you're going into buying this guy. But, uh, yeah, get this guy if you get the chance. He's totally worth it. And uh, with that, that's the end of this very long video. Like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And uh, as always, keep collecting and doing what you love, and staying nice to everybody. It all makes us feel happier in the end. And I'll uh, catch you guys later in the next video. Peace, guys.